Hey guys, what's up? And welcome back to episode 208 of the Alpha Girl Confidence Podcast. I'm your host, Shay Haddo. And in today's episode, I'm going to talk to you about the lessons that I learned from surfing for the very first time. So a little backstory, I am incredibly, incredibly, incredibly scared of the water and specifically the ocean. Like I always say that I can't swim when in reality I can swim. I'm just terrified to swim where I can't touch. So if you know me, you know that I will never get into a lake where I can't touch without a life jacket. I won't get into the ocean where I can't touch without a life jacket. So that's just always been one of my biggest fears. But over the last couple of years, I've really been like watching surfing a lot. And I'm like, wow, I don't want to live my life and go through life without at least trying surfing because it looks so much fun. And I know it's a great way for me to get connected with the ocean and try something new. And so about a month ago from the release of this episode, I was in Hawaii and I signed up for surfing lessons. So I booked the the surfing lessons probably three or four months before the actual before the actual lesson, and so I was pretty nervous heading into it—a mix of nerves and excitement. I actually ended up having such an incredible time. I had so much fun, learned so much, and even caught a bunch of waves. So, if you're listening on just audio, feel free to head over to YouTube because I'm going to kind of show some pictures and maybe some clips if they're clear enough. Maybe some clips on the YouTube as well. But after that surfing session, I was reflecting in my hotel hotel room and I was like, you know what? Like I learned so many valuable life lessons from surfing that I wanna share here with you guys. So I had come up with this episode while I was in Hawaii and now I'm finally bringing it to you. So I'm super excited to share. I got my top five lessons that I learned from surfing that are going to help you in your life and in your sport. And if you're a surfer, help you in your surfing as well. So the first lesson that I learned was really that the anticipation of the thing that you're scared about is always going to be worse than actually doing it. So for me, I was pretty nervous before surfing. I wasn't sure like how deep it was going to be. Yes, we had an instructor out there, but again, I was really, really nervous. So I when we showed up to the surfing lesson, I could feel the butterflies. I was like, oh no, I might I might have to go poop in the ocean because I was so nervous. And then once we actually got in the water, I was like, I, I wasn't nervous. So I had built up all these nerves and all this anticipation for surfing. But when I actually got out there, like it wasn't, it wasn't scary at all. It wasn't bad at all. I wasn't nervous at all. And I noticed that with myself in like a lot of things too, whether it's go, looking back on my playing days, being super nervous about a tryout. And then when you actually have the tryout, it's like, oh, this isn't that bad or a game or a speech or a performance, like related to any part of your life. The thing that you're really nervous about, the anticipation of that thing is usually way worse than the thing itself. So remember that, when, remember when you start to get worked up a little bit, if you're nervous about a test coming up or you're nervous about a game or a tryout, remember that the actual test game or tryout is not nearly as bad as your nerves leading up to the test game or tryout. So that was the, the big first one that I learned right off the bat. All right, so number two, and this one is maybe one of the biggest ones and just like a cool life lesson that I really took from this was to not count yourself out. And what I mean by that is like, don't put yourself in a box. For example, I put myself in the box of, I can't swim, I'm terrible in the water, therefore I will never swim in deep water, therefore I will definitely never surf. And I kept myself in that box for so long. And so it was kind of this identity that I had as a terrible swimmer. So I, I'm not saying that I have an identity of someone who is a good swimmer now, but I do have the identity now of someone that can get over that box that I put myself in and actually go do the thing. So don't count yourself out. If let's, let's put it real specific to a sport. If you want to try playing wing, but you're a center midfielder, you're like, nope, I'm just a center midfielder. That's who I am. That's what I do. You're putting yourself in a box, right? Get out of that box. Be willing to try something new. Same thing, let's say with a instrument or drawing or whatever it is. Are you putting yourself in a box with exploring life and having new experiences? Other people are really good at putting in you in a box. So be aware of when they do put you in a box, whether that's people calling you shy, 
as a kid, I was always called shy. I was shy. I was shy. So how did I act? I acted shy. I put myself in a box. I let other people put me in a box. So do not put yourself in a box. And when other people put you in a box, pay attention to that. And don't let them keep you in that box. So that's number two. All right, number three, and this is kind of a two-part, but number three is that challenging yourself and making progress in that challenge is one of the biggest confidence boosters, right? Like when I got done, I was like, oh my gosh, like I felt so just like confident in myself as a human being to go out and try something that I was incredibly scared of. Right. So not only was it a huge, huge, huge confidence booster in me and in my ability to actually go catch some waves, but it also was such a rewarding experience to go learn a new skill. And to be honest, like, I don't think I do that enough. I don't, especially as an adult, like a lot of times we don't challenge ourselves enough in trying new skills. But when you try a new skill, it's so incredibly rewarding and it's such a huge confidence booster. So I want to challenge you this week. When you're done listening to this podcast, what is one new skill that maybe you you can learn or that you have been wanting to learn that can help you boost your confidence? And I and it doesn't mean that as soon as you try it, your confidence is going to go up. It's the progress, it's the practice, it's the consistency that builds the confidence and it's also you looking at yourself in the mirror and saying, "Hey, you know what? I was really scared of this thing and I did it and that is the one of the biggest ways that you can boost confidence, which is why I talked about getting out of your comfort zone so much. So that was number three. Make sure that you're challenging yourself, getting outside of your comfort zone if you really want to boost confidence in all areas of your life. All right, so number four. All right, number four is a big one for any athlete listening, which that's who pretty much listens to this podcast. But number four is to trust your body and your instincts and stop overthinking things. So my experience with surfing, when before I was out in the water, I was overthinking my my like uh, what do you call it? My pop up. That's the word. I was I was questioning my pop up. I was thinking about oh I'm gonna do my pop up this way and this way, and and I was just thinking like oh I'll be able to think about this when I'm out in the water, but as soon as I got out in the water, I wasn't thinking about anything. My body was just kind of doing its thing. I was just trusting my instincts. I knew that when a wave was going to come, I need to not be behind my board so that the board would come and hit me in the face. Like it was just instinctual. And I had to trust that. I had to trust that my body was going to know how to pop up on the board. I had to trust that, yes, with my instructor's help, but eventually I got to the point where I knew when to pop up after paddling. So it was so cool for me to see this in action that I don't need to think to learn how to surf. It's more about trusting your body and trusting your instincts. And this one is huge for athletes because as athletes, especially as girl athletes, we tend to overthink like crazy. We tend to think, okay, when I get the ball, I need to do this. My body needs to be here. But as soon as you start overthinking, your brain overrides your body. And that's when you start to freeze on the field or the court. Your body knows what to do. It's called muscle memory. Your body knows what to do. So the more you can get into your body and trust your body and let your natural instincts take over, the more you're going to play freely and more confidently and better. As soon as your thoughts start to come in, I've used this analogy before, but it's like your your mind, your overthinking is like putting the, the brakes on the whole system, right? Overthinking, wait, wait, wait. Whereas the body is putting the gas on like, hey, let's go. So whether that's in a sport whether it's in, I mean, surfing is a sport, but like an extreme sport like that, or even a conversation, trusting your instincts, whether it's hiking, climbing, taking a test, trust your instincts, trust your body. Same thing with making decisions because overthinking doesn't help. Okay. So that's number four. And last but not least, number five is to be okay with sucking at first because the best way to learn is to just do it and take action. So a lot of times we try something new and it's like, oh, I suck. I'm no good. I'm going to give up, right? Every, here's the thing that everyone sucks at first. The first wave I caught, it was not good. It was not good. I, I think I barely got up or, I, oh, I remember I like barely got up and then I face planted it and I was like, what just happened? right? But I kept trying because the best way to learn is to just do it and take action. So be okay with not being great at something to start. Do you think about, think back to the first time you touched a basketball 
or a soccer ball or a softball or a volleyball or put those skates on or that snowboard on, were you as good as you are now? No. Why? Because you practice. Because you gave yourself enough grace to say, hey, I'm not very good at this now, but I'm going to keep trying. That's the same thing for every single athlete, musician, actress, whatever in the world. Nobody is good when they first start. So give yourself that grace and know that the best way to get better at something is to just go do it and take action. So let's do a real quick re recap of these five because I think they're so valuable. Number one is understand the, the anticipation and the nerves about that thing that you're worried about is always worse or when in the anticipation phase than it is in actually doing it. Number two is to stop counting yourself out. Stop putting yourself in a box. You're capable of so much more than you give yourself credit for. Number three is to challenge yourself by making progress. And in that, that will be a huge confidence booster. Number four is to trust your body and your instincts and stop overthinking. And then number five is to be okay with sucking at first and just take action if you really want to learn. So I hope that you got a lot of value out of this episode here. I had so much surfing. Again, if you've ever surfed before and you have any tips for me, let me know, hit me up in the DMs. Although I will probably never surf anywhere in California, maybe Southern California, but I'm trying to only surf where it's clear, where I can see what's going on underneath my feet and where I can touch, <laughs> at least for now. And maybe once I get more practice, I'll expand my comfort zone a little bit. And again, if, if you listen to this and didn't see the YouTube, I'm going to put some fun little clips in there and some, some fun pictures in there on the YouTube of me surfing. So if this was helpful for you and you want to learn more about how to be confident, how to become a complete athlete and develop that complete confidence, we are releasing our new program beyond the athlete soon. So make sure that you check out the link below. And if it's not released yet, when this episode comes out, then it will be released soon. So make sure you check that out. It's going to be really, really awesome where we go into the four pillars, which is connection to self. So really focusing on mindset, confidence, emotion, connection to body, focus on getting back connected to your body, trusting your body, trusting your instincts, connection to nature, which is improving your mental health, getting off your screen and exploring life more, playing more, having more fun, and then connection to others, which is all about leadership, navigating relationships, and honestly, just making the world a better place. So if you want to learn more about Beyond the Athlete, make sure you check out the link below. I would love to have you join us in this amazing mentorship program. And again, if you enjoyed the episode, share it with a friend, leave a review, and I will catch you on next week's episode.